Um, hi everyone, thanks for joining me on Friday afternoon. Um, and hopefully kind of the end of term is near or has happened for you. I've got one more week and then I'm going to be thinking a lot about reflection myself. Um, so this workshop kind of just came about after having a conversation with Chloe, because I had the pleasure of being on the podcast and then we chatted quite a lot. <laughs> um, and this is one of the many hats that I wear. So I work in FE, I teach art in FE, but I've also recently been looking at different ways of using the creative arts, kind of just for general benefits really to life. And one of those that I've found is for reflection. So today we're gonna to look at collage with kind of a digital edge to it, uh, just given kind of the context that we're in with Amplify FE. However, you know, all of the things I'm gonna chat about, if you're someone that prefers to work with physical things so like paper and I don't know feathers and all sorts of things like that you can apply all the things I'm going to talk about really with physical objects as well and sometimes if you've been staring at your screen all day you might want to step away um, and do something that is more real life um, but given that we're all online you have you have access to this digital option as well um, and also it comes with the added benefit that not everyone is like me and keeps everything that they ever come across. Um, so collage can be quite difficult if you don't have lots of things to make a collage out of. Whereas when you're online, you have obviously access to like an infinite amount of things, really. Um, if anyone has any questions as you go along, pop them in the chat um, and I'll, I'll get to them. Hopefully what I'll say will make sense but you never know when a Friday afternoon I may have used all of my sense up by now um so collage what is it um and what we're going to use it for today so I've said as a reflective tool um and really it's just a different way of depicting kind of information thoughts and feelings so some people journal I collage um and sometimes it's difficult to articulate things I think in language so if you can do it in images or signs or symbols or colors that's the kind of thing that collage can let you do. Um, but it can be a starting point as well. So things are always transferable, aren't they? So you may have students that collage might work really well with if they are struggling to communicate something with you. Or likewise, you may have, you know, if you have a meeting with a line manager or something and you can't quite get down on paper what it is you're trying to say, take a collage along with you, use it as a starting point. Um, so these are just kind of uses that I've seen kind of used with students and learners and staff since I've been delivering these sessions so it's nice to see them have a wide kind of variety of, of you know applying uh, applications um beyond kind of the realm of creating collage for art um and you may create them and never show them to anyone either and that's perfectly fine as well because they should be for you and used however they're going to be most beneficial for you so things that we can consider when we're thinking about collage is symbolism. So, um, you know, if there's something that represents something to you, so think about a light bulb image, for example, if you've had a good idea. Um, metaphor as well, often we talk in the metaphor quite a lot, but you could obviously represent that visually. So if you were trying to think of a metaphor now, when you say you could so hungry, you could eat a horse, for example, you could turn that into a collage somehow. Um, Scale, I've tried to represent some of these here with just icons from Microsoft Office. So I've got my scale image there where I've got the person looking quite tiny and then next to a big computer. Um, Cause that's definitely how I felt in lockdown was <laughs> that technology was taking over and was massive and the people on the screen were massive as well. And I felt a bit small. So you can think about scale in that way. Um, color. Like I say, you know, you might just have a favourite colour or you might want to think about really basic elements of colour theory. So often, you know, red, anger or love, depending on what it is that it's depicting or means something different. Um, but quite a fun thing to play with. And again, with these icons that I got from Microsoft Office, you can very easily change the colour of them as well. I'm going to talk about other places that you can get digital images from um, too. So you might be... Um, a PC user, you might be an Apple user, and what you have access to may vary slightly depending on what it is that you use. I use Microsoft Office 
constantly um, to the point where I feel like I should probably be sponsored by them, um, as I'm sure we all feel sometimes. So as long as you kind of have access to something like PowerPoint or similar, that's kind of the application that I will suggest that you would do a digital collage on. PowerPoint is great for images. Um, if anyone's ever tried to put an image in a Word document, you probably know that um, you try to insert a picture and everything moves about 15 pages. Um, <laughs> so PowerPoint is definitely much more user friendly or you could go really, I feel old school and say paint. I'm not even sure if that's still on laptops. I had to install it onto my laptop when I brought it, but I, I needed MS Paint in my life. Um, so framing as well. So what's included and what's not included can be really powerful. Um, i done a session like this with people that were nurses and they were looking at person centered um, care or patient centered care and they were creating collages that didn't include the patient um, so that was quite an interesting reflective tool for them to use because we we're going well what's missing why is it missing how can we get the patient back into your collage um composition so thinking about what's perhaps most important or most pressing for you was might be really big and really at the front and things that are perhaps lesser stresses or worries um, are in the background um, and then we're trying to get fancy language here, vectors and focus and placement. So I always say children's books are really good examples of this. So it's how you want the eye to move around the page, essentially. So you might have a bit of text in the top left hand corner and then you might have a bit of text in the middle of the page. And then you might have a bit of text in the bottom left hand corner. And it kind of helps with the storytelling. Um, so, yeah, text if it's in a book, but if it's in a collage, it might not be text. It might just be how you're arranging things. And that can be quite a nice way to depict kind of a journey that you're going on as well. But these are just kind of suggestions. You can ignore them all and you can just go for it. That's the good thing about collage is um, there is kind of art theory and things behind it. But really, collage is about playing, I think. And particularly when you're reflecting, you might find that they change quite a lot as your thinking changes as you work through that process. So digital collage. So where can you get images from? So if you might have your own digital images, you might want to include perhaps your own photographs um, stock images as well. So again, if you're working on PowerPoint, if you go insert image, it will offer you, I think, four options of how to upload images. One of them is from your computer. I think one of them is stock images. Uh, one of them is from the Internet and Maybe there's only three options, but there's lots of options there and that's built into PowerPoint shapes as well. So you might want to insert a star. You might feel like you've done really great this term and that you deserve a gold star or two. Um, so you can use those, you know, you don't have to be fancy here. Um, again, icons, as I've mentioned, and as I've kind of put on my example slides, you can search key terms in there and it will show you. The different icons that Microsoft have decided represent that thing that you're looking for and you can change the color and the shape and the size um, and I just changed the outline color but you can change the block color as well and you can start layering them up so you can get quite uh, interesting complex images there as well and then you've got websites that have royalty free images so if you're planning on sharing <laughs> your uh, collages widely or trying to I don't know uh, monetize them in some way, making sure that you're using royalty free images. Obviously, if you're using Im the collages for your own personal use and you're not going to share them, then that doesn't matter as much. As long as it's for personal use, um, you can pretty much go wild with the images. Um, and you may, you know, often when we're collaging with magazines and new pa newspapers and things, you're changing them so drastically that by the end you might not even notice what the original image was. Um, so then I've just got some kind of basic instructions, really. So I've said open a document, PowerPoint, Word or similar. Um, as I've said, I wouldn't particularly advocate Word, but if you're someone that loves Word, go for it. Um, and if you're on an Apple product, do you think you might have pages or something similar? I'm not an Apple person, so I don't know what goes on in that world. Um, and then inserting your images from a range of sources arrange and layer them and then play with kind of color as well and size and scale so i've just got a couple of examples so my first example is a digital collage um, and i've get, tried to give some context to what they were doing as well so this was from a criminology course that i went to visit and we done collage to try and communicate a theme 
so this was completely digital you know they inserted a picture of the world um lots of people and then little symbols that they thought represented the theme that they were trying to talk about and then they used that as a prompt really to talk about their topic further so in a way simplistic but also you know they've used a picture from the internet they've used layering they've used size and scale um so it becomes more complex the more you kind of dig into it um and then i've got i think two more examples and these are physical collages but could be re recreated easily digitally um, so this was someone, it's a collage of personal development, well-being and resilience. So they were thinking about their journey. So they kind of put numbers in to represent their age and this red piece of string to kind of document their timeline and then different images and things that they found that they felt were important at that point in their life and where they wanted to end up at the end as well. Um, and this is one of my favorites it's very playful nothing was stuck down and it doesn't exist anymore but it was a trainee teacher and they were trying to visualize their journey so they were trying to recreate like an obstacle course so they've got paper clips that were kind of like barbed wire um, and a hoop to jump through and all of this going on but then a lovely sunset in the background so lots and lots going on there um so we thought seems that of you know the time of the year that it is that we would think about reflection um so you might want to reflect on the year that's just gone or perhaps you want to reflect on the year that is going to be coming up very soon because <laughs> the summer always flies by um but it's always you know if you're doing something digital it's different in a way to the physical collages because you can kind of just flip through magazines and stuff and see if something grabs your eye but with the digital collage you might need a little bit more direction so start thinking about keywords so if you're reflecting and you're thinking oh i had a really uh, I, didn't, I don't know difficult i was moving classrooms every five minutes perhaps you want to look at different classrooms that could represent that in images or how you would represent moving around a lot um, and how that made you feel like maybe you liked moving around a lot maybe it was um, a really stressful part of your day to be in a different classroom every you know for every session so you might want to focus on something really specific like that or it might be the year as a whole thinking where did you start this year at and how did you end the year um, so a bit like that timeline journey example that I shared with you and this, again, I said consider colours that you want to include, perhaps there's a colour that is overriding in your life, it might be the colour of your, the logo of the place you work, for example, or the colour of your classroom wall or the colour of your car, or something that is really present to you, it might really stick out to you. And then it's just really playing with these, inserting them, moving them around, cropping them and things like that. Um, I've said, remember, collage can be abstract as well. so. You don't have to, you know, represent something. If you're thinking about, I don't know, your commute, you don't have to include a train and a car and a bus and things like that. You could think about more the feelings and what those feelings look like. Um, so that's probably the end of me rabbiting on about collage and digital collage. <laughs> Hopefully, kind of that overview has been useful for people. But what we really wanted to do in this session was give you kind of time to do that reflecting. Um, in you know a supportive environment so you can stick around and if people have any questions or want to ask anything about the process or want to share their outcome more than welcome to do that um so chloe i imagine that's probably good to stop the recording fantastic half done oh brilliant okay I'm definitely a PowerPoint person too. <laughs> when, I, when I was in uni, I used like the whole of the Adobe Creative Suite, but I started using PowerPoint um, when I was working in community learning because it's just something I could then promote to other practitioners to use because yeah. the word drove me up the wall. But I know it works for some people and some people are friends with it. I'm just not friends with Word for anything remotely designed. -like. So um, I love powerpoint um am i able to share my screen because then i could perhaps share the process yeah okay share yeah share application screen so if you go to the share at the bottom and then share the yeah. screen and then you can okay 
and do that weird vortex thing I think can you see my powerpoint yes you can. yeah <laughs> Sometimes you do that and you can just see yourself like an infinite number of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can see you. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so yeah, like I said, I've still got one more week left, so I don't know. I'm. It's difficult sometimes to reflect beyond how you feel in the moment, and at the moment I am exhausted. <laughs> so it's an interesting one, but on the whole, yeah, I think I've had quite a positive year, so I might try and reflect on that also I think it's very easy I think when we're reflecting and looking back the negative things often jump out a little bit more Mm. so trying to have a bit of more of a holistic and go okay maybe I had one bad day that week (laughs) but the rest of the week was fine I really like these icons as well that are just like you know they're built in aren't they so you don't need to Mm. go too far for looking for stuff um it's quite easy to have that and then maybe in a few moments you go I don't want that and it's easy for you to get something else in quite quickly you know it doesn't have to be laboring to find one perfect image it can be something quite quick and they do have quite a lot of options in the icons so I don't know if you saw when I typed sun in you've got a variety of suns and then also other things that relate to suns (laughs) so it's useful in that sense Mm, let's see the art ones always make me laugh because um i don't know if anyone here knows me or not but i'm a text artist so i work with text and language um but often this is how we are depicted as artists with our little berets on and paint palettes (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah you've got you've got to embrace it that's the thing about icons is they're quite um to the point <laughs> I don't know if I could probably edit this and change that paint palette into a box of letters that would be interesting um, I guess I thought just like the, the base they're, they're they basically get an idea across don't they um, mm. I, I did um, a course with uh, well both Emily Bryson and Emma O'Leary who both do um, the a big in graphic facilitation worlds. Um, Emma in graphic facilitation, Emily in what ESOL, she's been using graphic facilitation ESOL um, and EAL um, <coughs> worlds. And they both talk about how you just have to, so it's about, yeah, it's about drawing, but so basically it doesn't have to be like fancy pants. You know, it is just something that's nice and quick, literally just like a few lines, a square, a triangle, a circle. Like if you can do basic shapes, you can, design your own icon it's just it's communicating yeah. it's, as long as the person looking at it can understand what you're trying to get across so that picture of an artist could just be you know a circle and then a semicircle, and then a silly floppy shape <laughs> for the yeah. <laughs> yeah. palette do you know what I mean and a few little dots yeah. the colors and people would understand what it meant but I also it also resonates with me about um that being the general depict, you know, picture of an artist. <laughs> yeah, I um wonder what their icon for teacher is. Let's see. Well, yeah. this one I typed school in for this one because um, I didn't think adult community learning would come up. I don't know if they're that specific, <laughs> uh, but it's quite interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because we always, you know, kind of talk about, was it the sage on the stage? Um, yeah. I think we've probably moved, walked, moved past that a little bit. But that is yeah. um, how they are depicting it here, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Um, but hopefully it's quite a playful process. I think anything which is kind of reflection is, if it can take you away from the moment, you know just for five ten minutes and you can you might create something useful for yourself or you might just you know chill out for a little bit um which I'm always a fan of (laughs) if I can chill out oh yeah definitely because I think sometimes reflection can be actually be like a really it can be arduous and it can be um like quite emotive and emotional Mm. And I yeah, think 
you know so having to write it all down can sometimes be like quite that's what how it can become quite an arduous task whereas being able to just this is I don't know just makes it a bit more playful um, yeah I mean I do so much writing for my studying and you know sometimes I feel like I've run out of words so I don't I can't keep a you know, journal or a diary or anything like that because I finish the day and I'm just a bit like well I don't have anything else left to say <laughs> yeah. but I can mess around with some shapes and some pictures um it's the sort of thing that makes me happy <laughs> so hopefully it um will make other people happy too I've got very simple aims in life. They are mostly related to happiness. Um, I can't actually see the chat or the platform when I'm sharing my screen. So do let me know if anything is happening. I will do. I've just popped something into chat for everybody. If they've got any questions, not um, just to shout them out. You can unmute yourself, folks. Yeah, um, we're not recording now. So feel free to. We had that discussion, didn't we? Like, I always think, um, did, so we usually do webinars that are like half an hour, but we wanted this to be a workshop time and space so that you could ask those questions or just have a play. Um, if you've got a question about using PowerPoint, so if you're using PowerPoint right now and you're like, how do I get those icons up? Then just unmute yourself and ask the question. Or if your microphone's not working, I think, um, as it Miranda said, microphone issues, you can always pop it into chat um, and I will, say it out loud to Abby if there's any questions what's that blue what's the blue triangle for well um, I'm thinking about identity constantly <laughs> and I guess at the moment I think I have three identities ah. so a bit of a triangle going on um but I, I'm actually literally handing in my uh, PhD on Monday so <gasps> then I don't know what shape I will be anymore. <laughs> oh gosh. I don't yeah. know what shape I'll be. <laughs> People keep going, what will you do? It's like, I'm just going to hand it in and see what happens. <laughs> Solid life plan. Oh, well. I still, I still feel like I've got lots to do. Um, my to-do list isn't any shorter. Well, I really appreciate you coming to, to do this oh, now. I know, so. and that's the thing, I need it. I need the art. <laughs> <laughs> have a bit of time out. As you say before, PhD, it's all, you know, it's all, well, I know you haven't just been using words for PhD, right? But, you know, mm. writing everything up, it's, that's, you know, can be a bit of a... Yeah, I mean, it is a lot of words. And then my art <laughs> practice is words. So I feel like my well-being needs to be something that isn't, isn't words. <laughs> But yeah, I think you, you said something before that really resonated when you said about um it's Friday, so I might have run out of sense. And I was like, <laughs> yes, <that> completely resonates <laughs> with me. <laughs> yeah. I said that to my learners when we got into July. I was like, I'm gonna make less and less sense as the month goes on. <laughs> they were fine with it. They were like, okay. <laughs> But it is one of those things, isn't it? It's um, you're on, you know, you're on it, aren't you? Constantly when you're with other people, you have and you have to kind of consciously make sure that you make some kind of coherent sense. Um, but often when I'm teaching as well, you know, I will tell them we'll go through the slideshows and we'll talk about what we're doing. So it is often, well, it's always art related because I'm teaching them art. Um. <laughs> and they can look at me blankly and then I will show them an example and they'll go oh yeah I know what you mean now so it's <laughs> finding the right way to communicate I think um, and sometimes that isn't with text and language it's with visuals um, which is quite interesting I guess the usefulness of that differs depending on what it is that you're interested in or subjects that you're looking at um, Emma's just put, um, from what we were just discussing about, she's put, me too, it's so nice to stop and do this for a little little bit, I'm so glad I signed up now. Oh, brilliant, thank you. Um, 
I don't know if there if people are comfortable with sharing I, I'm nosy <laughs> that's why I got into teaching art particularly because I get to look in people's sketchbooks um but I don't know if there's a we can t make use of the hashtag or share them in some other way um if people are comfortable doing that I'll pop this on Twitter <laughs> for um the world to see but sometimes yeah definitely or LinkedIn just use the hashtag yeah. uh, and um, if they want, if you want to share, there's no like on you know. It's, it's oh yeah, no. But Whenever I do these workshops, I always say to people, well, you know, don't don't bother, don't worry about sharing them. Like the ones I've done in person as well. And then the last one I done, it was about reflecting on your identity, like who you are as a as a like a researcher. So I said at the start, I was like, no need to share their personal, you know, I'll wander around and have a chat. Okay. But at the end of the session, there's like, I don't know, 30 of them and everyone wanted to get up and share. Because <laughs> I think it's quite empowering for yeah. them. Um, so that was really nice. Because actually, um, at the start of these things, people sometimes are a bit like, are you sure this is going to work as a, <laughs> as a tool, you know, as a reflective tool? I'm like yeah just trust in the process and it all will become well, that's it so you've got something that you can kind of like um anchor anchor your thoughts and anchor your like verbal reflections um mm. focus so much on having reflection written down Okay, now I've got your screen. I only have one screen, but it's a long one. So um, I've got your PowerPoint, my PowerPoint, and chat open. Oh my gosh. <laughs> have a little play as well. I'm like getting jealous, so I'm, I'm going to have a bash. Because mm. uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in a Mac on a Mac, so I'm a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm just oh, yeah. a little bit also because I have mine on dark mode as well, so it always looks completely different to what other people have it in. Um, and so, do you have PowerPoint on your Mac? Yes, yes, I do um, because I do actually really like using it, and also because when I recommend it to people, I like to be able to recommend something that people can actually use, which is why I don't mm -hmm. use. Like, I used InDesign when I was at uni um, and yeah. Premiere. But they quickly went from CS4, you know, like the creative suites that you could buy and individually to their subscription model, which a lot of yeah. people can't really afford. It's not accessible. So when I was making worksheets and making designs and, and stuff and sharing and resources and sharing them with teachers, um, I wanted to use a software that others could use and access quite easily. So that's why I started using PowerPoint. I don't even use Publisher because not everyone can access publisher no. um i can't have well i'm on a mac so i can't even access it anyway um but it's interesting to see what i can what i can access on an apple mac because not we don't get everything from no, microsoft no. they give us like 70 percent powerpoint <laughs> but um you know we still do quite a lot on it it just looks a little bit different mm -hmm. um, yeah so the thing that we use um where I work as well for our learners is they have access to Microsoft Online. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's same, so it's limited functionality, but yeah. it means that they can log on and access it. Because otherwise, I mean, some of our learners are with us for five weeks, you know, and you can't expect people to be going out and buying Microsoft Office. Yeah, week yeah. Week. it's expensive, um, really, in the grand, you know, for what it is. <laughs> I, I think because I think we should just all have you know have access to these tools um but it seems like every time I buy a laptop there's less and less on it and you have to buy everything individually <laughs> um yeah. but yeah so yeah. for our learners they've been able to get them office online um mm -hmm. which means you can you can create things like this on office online but you yeah. might just have less icons to choose from yeah. um but if you yeah. use the images from the internet you still have everything that's on the internet <laughs> yeah which is a lot <laughs> well right emma 
um, yeah. has um, the joy of Microsoft. I have saved in OneDrive, and you might be able to see it. You can access this um, later if you want it, Abby, or you can have a little play with it now. I've just gone and clicked on it, um, and I can see Emma's um, notes and uh, what she's working on right now. So, yeah, and I love this. Let the me joy see of if I can work out how to do that. We can well, rise. Point me in the right direction. Go into chat, and Emma has shared a link to her. Oh, um, oh to yes. Well done. Amazing. And we can access See the it. You know, um, issues with share. I could never actually access people's stuff in SharePoint, but that was nice and easy peasy. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Emma. Straight oh, lovely. In. Thank you for sharing. Look at that. I love that picture. I don't know. Did, I want to know whether you took that picture, Emma, or you found it. Gorgeous tree. Mm. Yeah. Well, I love the little running figure. Yeah. This is where the arty bit comes in because then, um, like you, Chloe, I have to just have like a million questions. I'm like, is it the same person running in all these different directions? <laughs> or is That's it one so person being <laughs> hierarchy thing or is someone like you know is it a journey is it oh he has so many questions <laughs> but hopefully as well if if you do do a collage like this for reflection and perhaps like as a reflection with someone else they might be questions that you've not asked yourself so if someone goes oh you know that's an interesting choice perhaps subconsciously you are thinking about hierarchy but you weren't thinking about it when you made it um yeah, that's really yeah. interesting. Like you've not got that cog like cognitively, that wasn't there like explicitly mm -hmm. for you, but maybe subconsciously it was kind of like eking out in the visuals. Um, yeah. I really like that. I do think creative things, and I'm confident in saying it's scientifically proven, uses a different part of your brain. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a fact. Um, if you say things confidently enough. Um, but yeah, I think it must, you know because you're working and thinking in a different way so you may unlock things that you weren't particularly aware of um before which is again one of the things I like about it I really like the idea in conversation as well I'll be sorry I didn't mean to yeah I mean it's, there's no reason it has to be a solitary activity <laughs> you can bring as many people in as you want really um you know and it's nice i guess if you had something like a shared powerpoint on a OneDrive, you could everyone could have their own slide but you'd be able to see everyone working in real time so you'd be able to see other people's processes and um there used to be this thing um where you could I mean it probably still is but I can't think of what it's called you can capture the making process so you can record your screen while you were making for example and then you would see the whole process you could play the whole process back um which is quite interesting because then it goes back to one of those points that I was saying about what's included and what's not included because I might start with something um and then it might not make it into the final thing so I could get rid of that and then it changes it completely mm -hmm. but it was there you know it was part of the collage's history it was there at some point but it was quite um large so well um i've just realized i was looking i think at an old version i just refreshed the page of what emma was working on and she's since added a few little bits and changed a few bits and bobs. And she's explained in chat that the tree is a stock image, but she blurred it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the person is me running around the different branches of my job. Oh, I like uh -huh. that. That's very good. Yeah, so we talked about kind of metaphor and symbolism. Yeah, very, very nice. I look really, really like that metaphor of the different branches of your job, but also running around if you've got so many things to do as well and mm -hmm. having that person the icons on the outside are my big projects and achievements that's the bit I didn't see so I had to refresh it we've got a little robot and um a computer and a cloud mm. 
fantastic. Oh my gosh, what's going on here? But that has made my thing develop as well. Oh. Because when you said about the different branches, the thing I always say to people is that I have different hats. Yeah, I always talk about my hats with my amplifier fee hat on. I am currently yeah. in a web. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. So, laughs> yeah. I always say to people, it's like sometimes I think it would be easier if I had actual hats, and then at least <laughs> I would know. <laughs> I would know who I was supposed to be. <laughs> Make it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I guess we've got the menu on instead of hats but hats i like that thing. and the icons in microsoft they look really cool actually to yeah. depict different hats yeah i, I mean some of them are a bit literal i'm not sure about the chef hat but i do cook dinner so um, <laughs> i don't know if that counts <laughs> ironically i wanted to be a chef when i was younger um, yeah, and then i developed yeah. quite a lot of food allergies <laughs> oh no Probably not the career for me if I can't eat anything. <laughs> oh, of course, you've got to taste everything, so you wouldn't be able to yeah. taste it. Because um, at first I was quite put off because I don't like seafood. Um, and then I couldn't eat gluten, and I was just like, oh, you know, going to have to work in a very specific kind of restaurant. Yeah. Um, and now here I am. I'm an artist and I'm a teacher and I'm a researcher. <laughs> I'm not a chef. Not yet. Maybe one day. That's the other thing though isn't it is um we can all kind of continue to change and develop and you think about how many different careers people have these days yeah, exactly um, emma's popped um a thing in there about myro which i've, I've heard about have you, have you heard about that have you heard of myro before abby it's like i big... think i've been in one yeah i uh, i can't say i got the hang of it because i was tr i think i was trying to create diagrams i might be thinking of a different thing but i think it was like an online whiteboard thing and i was trying to yeah. create a diagram system on it um and if i can't work something out within five minutes i'm normally a bit like oh not for me <laughs> i think it depends how you oh, use my is like, when i've been in big groups it's i find it really overwhelming and i find it quite stressful mm -hmm. but that's big groups but if it's just a few of you I find like it can be yeah. quite nice because um it's expansive and you know never ending so it um it you can't you can all be working on different things and then kind of like come together or go and like gag in on what someone else is working on which I quite like yeah. um but I like using Jamboard um for so many different things and I use Jamboard I've for like used Jamboard before Oh, Jamboard's one of my it's, it's similar to what I just described. Mm -hmm. so my row for is what I'd use Jamboard for, in that like every person would have a different Jamboard slide. Um, so you can kind of gag in on what someone else is doing. Mm -hmm. um, I've used it as like you know in classes before, but I've also used it for my own lesson prep because it's just like Jamboard is just like a big piece of paper, flip chart paper with like yeah. digital flip chart paper with digital post-it notes and it's really really simplified but that's why I like using it in class because you know it's literally there's a pen there's six shapes to choose from six colors so you know you got your paint in there six colors yeah. to choose from. not the toxic green though um <laughs> and um you know so it's really really simplified version of powerpoint effectively um but it's quite nice it's tactile because you can just move all the different things around. Um, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, so have a little bash at that. And I would say also mm. have a little pyro. It can be quite cool, but it's, I think when you, you it's how you use mm. it. Um, I've seen people use them in presentations where they're kind of, I guess, almost, they've moved beyond being the working project and they always look so impressive. Um, but yeah, like I say, I, um, I did give up quite easily with that one. I think it was one of the ones in lockdown when people were going, try this, try this, try this. And I was going, there's yeah. so much to try. It's overwhelming, isn't it? And finding what works for you. That's why I went on to, I, I, you know, I know Jamboard works for me and I, I quite like it. Um, so I, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> cool, okay. Yeah. 
I think I'm happy with my collage. Nice. I'm going to go back and refresh and see whether she's added any more bits and bobs to it. Oh, we've got more icons on the sides. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing I like about PowerPoint is that you can obviously save the slides as PDFs and yeah. also JPEGs and well, all these other options, uh, mm. which is quite useful. The JPEG thing is particularly useful, I find. Yeah, that's quite nice. And then like if, you, if you'd made one all the way through the year, like mm. a, like every month or took like half an hour out of your time at the end of the week and then it becomes like a um end of week mind dump yeah you know yeah especially if you had, it could be very useful when you've had a rubbish week um to reflect on what you were saying before about how like you know sometimes we focus so much on the negative things and actually to be like you know this good thing happened actually and it's I think it can be quite therapeutic and it's a bit of mindfulness really as well to have that half an hour to just do a dump um mind dump <laughs> and then yeah. um if you save them all then you'd have like at the end of the year you'd have like a year's worth of um mm -hmm. all these different like reflections to look back on to see I mean, they're all visual and you might have absolutely no idea why you put that blue triangle on in September or what you know whatever or that jar of peanut butter I don't know like, <laughs> yeah. I have no idea why you did it but it kind of in a way doesn't matter because it's about that reflection at that moment in time I guess and your thoughts and you might perceive that peanut I don't know why I've gone to I don't even like peanut butter but um <laughs> Uh, uh, but you might reflect on that jar in a different way um, six months later than you did in October. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you know, if you're doing something like PowerPoint, you can save them um, the JPEGs, but you could just have a PowerPoint each week or each month, and then you'd have them all in one place. Um, keep them, keep them safe and together. And yeah, so hopefully it's introduced people to kind of a different way of working through reflection and yeah that's that's my hope that was the aim so, <laughs> um well, I'll yeah. ask out loud like what, what do Daniel um Emma and Miranda what do you think and how do you think you would use it I know some of you don't have access to microphone right now, so we'll give you a few minutes to type something into chat if you want to. But um, how do you think you'll take it forward? I think it's important to carve that time out. So even though I just said like a week, I don't know whether I'd get stressed at doing it every week, but actually I feel like we need to be kind to ourselves and give ourselves that time to play and reflect. I think it's important. Otherwise we just rush mm -hmm. straight into the next week. Yeah, yeah, I think, and it doesn't have to take, you know, masses of time, mm -hmm. you know, you can do things relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. Oh, lovely, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think like we've been really bigging up PowerPoint this afternoon. <laughs> Uh, it's good. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy and it's so simple and it's kind of tactile, isn't it? Like, and it's something that people don't think of when they think of PowerPoint. Because I have this major issue when people say, "Oh, death by PowerPoint," and I just think PowerPoint is actually a really—it's a powerful tool. And yeah. for many, oh, like it can, obviously, it can be used. You know, I don't want to say badly but you get those people where it's almost you know so much text it should be a word document and they sit there so you have lots oh, of experiences like that but then if you use it in a completely different way it becomes almost a completely different tool exactly Lovely. i think that's it yeah exactly it becomes a different tool instead of just seeing it as a presentation tool seeing it in a different light I'll look at this stuff. yeah because that's the thing as well. If you think about PowerPoint, I think you are often thinking about presentations that are going to be disseminated, you know, shared with groups of people. But actually, the way we're using them 
today is very much personal use, isn't it? Um, but lovely comment that just come through in the chat about using it with um, SEND students as well. Um, and yeah, getting people to use things that are more visual, but also you're then introducing them to Microsoft Office. Um, yeah. And IT becomes a massive thing that people are looking for, isn't it? Kind of like every level of job now, you're expected to have a basic understanding of ICT. Um, and it's a bit like a nicer way of introducing it, I think. So even with any learners, I think that are maybe a bit nervous of Microsoft Office. I always say start with PowerPoint <laughs> um, yeah. before Word because it's so much more user friendly. Um, and then, you know, once they're putting images and stuff together. I mean, I was a massive geek as a child, but I used to make like PowerPoints when I was little for fun. You know, because it was so I could put, you know, you can put video clips in there, you can put sound in, you can make really cool transactions and animation and stuff. And you can make your things go, you know, up and down and all around. <laughs> so it used to be hours of fun, but not everyone was born with that innate love of PowerPoint <laughs> that I seem to have um, had. But yeah, if you can get people to do fun things with it first then you can get them, you know, gradually throughout the year, introduce it in a different way. Um, yeah. Yeah. So brilliant. Yeah, um, feedback is always really useful as well. So if people do go on and use this with other people, I'm all over the internet, I'm on Twitter, let me know, <laughs> let me know how it goes. Because <laughs> it's interesting to see how it works with different groups of people, because like I say, I've done this with criminology students, PhD students, uh, teacher training <laughs> basically there's no, they haven't really found a boundary for it yet I think it's useful for most people um because I think reflection can only be a good thing um yeah and I think someone mentioned well-being earlier and I think the two are linked quite strongly aren't they if you're not reflecting on what's happening it's difficult to take care of your own well-being if you're not sure kind of where your head's at in the first instance um but yeah we're coming up towards the end that was a very quick hour i must say <laughs> um yes well, thank well, you huge, thank yous. huge thank yous for coming and doing this and doing this like at the end of the academic nearly the end of the academic year for yourself <laughs> but also three days before you've got to hand your uh your <laughs> really appreciate <laughs> time out for us and um yeah, no it's useful but I think that's the thing you need to put it in a calendar sometimes don't you people have like writing rooms perhaps we need a digital collage room on zoom people can get together and do digital collage <laughs> it's that accountability I think make sure you do it <laughs> yeah I totally totally agree because otherwise like uh, there's so many things that I go like oh you know in in theory I do this but actually and I find that with the reading circle that I run it's that it's like accountability actually um yeah. so I don't know well we'll hold that thought won't we <laughs> keep that idea kind of like growing we'll, do, but, uh, we'll say something quite profound and then they'll be like okay there's six minutes left bye <laughs> there's not time to run back all this <laughs> digital collage sessions okay yeah. <laughs> um yeah, who knows? It could become a thing. Let's start a trend. <laughs> yeah, let's see whether it oh, we'll see whether it catches on. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, you had to be soon, and we'll we'll discuss that a little bit later. We'll yeah. discuss it after you've um, had a rest, a well earned rest. Um, but if anyone does have anything that they want to pop into chat to say to Abby, or please unmute um, if you want to say anything, because um, we're going to finish up in just a few moments. So. Um, I'm going to um, download and post my collage to Twitter so everyone can see it and wonder what on earth we've been doing. <laughs> yes, what is this like reflecting digital collage? What is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just um, refreshed Emma's again. I love it yeah well that's the other cool thing about um digital and online things isn't it you can't just look over emma's shoulder but you can kind of look over it virtually
Hmm. Oh, I can see that you, you tweeted 56 minutes ago Rabbi, to say we are back. Yeah. I'm going to tweet again 56 minutes later. <laughs> Oh no, mine isn't come up for me. There you go. Okay. I've sent it into the world. We shall see. It's the wild, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite pleased with um my outcome. <laughs> uh, I quite like it. Okay. I like that you chose purple. That's my favourite colour. I like it. Oh no, yeah, it's a colour that came up in my research. Someone said that artists were purple, so I kind of ran with it. Oh, that's um, really interesting. Purple. Well, they said yeah. that teachers were blue and artists were. Oh no, that was what it was. Teachers are blue, artists are red, and artist teachers are purple. Oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm going to give you this little tidbit of Liverpool. Our Liverpool um, bins and the Liverpool colour is purple. Um, LFC, Liverpool Football Club, their colour is red. Everton, which is our other football club, is blue. Oh, there we go. A little bit Everyone of, uh, likes a bit of colour mixing. Everyone <laughs> likes a bit of colour theory on their, their Friday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the trivia from Liverpool. If that should ever come up on a pub quiz for anyone, yeah. um, why is the city of Liverpool's um, colour purple? Well, yeah. now you know. Uh, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, great brilliant. Stuff. Okay. Well, it's one minute to three, everybody. Thank you so, so much, Abby. And um, <clears throat> thank you, everyone, for popping their thoughts into chat. And thank you, Emma, for sharing um, yours as you've been creating it. That's been really, really lovely to be able to drop in there as you've been like coming up with ideas and changing things around. Um, as Abby said, please do um, share what you've been up to if you want to um, share with us. Like, you don't have to do it like um publicly you can find abby or you know amplify <laughs> fee on any of the social media spaces and message us if you want to as well um mm -hmm. but um yeah i hope you um keep it i hope you think about it and keep doing it and to share with us um how you use it if you use it in future whether you use it for yourselves with your colleagues or with your learners and um have a fantastic summer as well whatever you're doing lovely yeah, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh, I love those hats. I'm just having a little look at them. Ah, everyone. <laughs> oh, everyone. Everyone's Me and my hat. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, yeah, let me know when it is uh, up and I will share widely with everyone <laughs> with everyone <laughs> it's not um it's not me that sorts it out it is um emily one of the alt team um that will um <clears throat> up because you know she's got all the access to basically booking systems and the alt website and the youtube etc so she that's why yeah. like i couldn't tell you like how many people had booked on until like 10 minutes before <laughs> um so <clears throat> yeah um that's also why it's easier for you to just book on when you do a webinar for, as a presenter for you to just book on so that you've got the link so that i know you've okay. got a link rather than like because no one could be here today to co-pilot um yesterday when i had no voice whatsoever i did ask if someone could come in and just do that bit at the beginning but um and with people not really talking much i was like i'm just gonna keep talking even though i've got a horrible question <laughs> well you can you can stop talking now you can um go back to i don't know interpretive dance or something yeah and, I'm gonna um... go in a minute. <laughs> so so cool and i just love that you know it was really it was really lovely that emma put hers in and put it she felt yeah there for people to have a little look and she's commenting in chat um it's always difficult online, isn't it? <coughs> because yeah, when I do it, 
in person even if like people are like oh can you pass me that you know so they interact on some level just yeah. for practical reasons um mm-hmm. and yeah no hopefully it sounded like the one people that came sounds like they got a benefit out of it so hopefully people that watch it back will as well um but yeah i'm gonna go make up a tea now and just stare at my phd <laughs> it's pretty much done this is the problem this is why i need to just hand it in because it's pretty much done i just keep looking at it and moving things slightly and mm-hmm. moving them back and then moving them <laughs> so i need to um get rid of it and stop stop moving things <laughs> up and down <laughs> oh but no it was nice actually nice break to do something a bit different oh wow i will um yeah. go and go and get it done yes. and then relax afterwards mm-hmm. so relax, obviously it's so important but do you know what i mean just go and go mm-hmm. and crack on with it well it's the thing isn't it it's like you've pretty much done most of the work now so i just need to submit it and then it's very um kind of anti is it what's the word anticlimactic yeah yeah it is a bit yeah you spend three years working on something and then it's just like oh here it is <laughs> here Fantastic. you go <laughs> well you don't just have it you've got your beaver as well haven't you and um... yeah, not until like the end of september so it feels oh it doesn't feel finished so it's yeah um but yeah i f- might feel different once i've handed it in on monday i might and go and scream into a pillow or something and be like it's done it's over <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh lovely. Well, lovely to see you. And um I hope you feel better soon. <laughs> I'm sure I will. Um, okay. Yeah. Do I need to press X to leave? Um you can actually just close that tab and you will leave. Oh, okay. If you want to know any future things that you're in, there's like a little burger menu on the top left hand side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, I will leave. See ya. Bye. See ya. Bye.